call that sent shockwaves through Wall Street. Charlie. And a report, a very detailed report, Kevin, that I read. I have to confess I didn't understand everything. I'm not an expert at the energy business. Yep. Kinder Morgan is a pipeline company, yep. delivers oil. We'll get into some of that. Um, but the question I have for you is why are you right and everybody else is wrong? This is a company which has got plenty of analysts on Wall Street. Uh, plenty of big name investors are in it. Yep. There are a degree of stock promoters that are in it as well on, on other networks uh, they, you know, who say they love the stock for various reasons. Rich Kinder is a known quantity on Wall Street. You're a 26-year-old kid just out of Princeton, I believe? Yeah, that's right. How many years? Uh, three years. Okay. Why are you right? Yeah, so, I mean, if you think about the MLP industry in general, this has just master been... Master Limited Partnerships. Ma master Limited Partnerships. This has just been a fantastic sector for 10, 15 years. Right. Um, and this is a sector... Um, that everybody has made money in, right. and I don't think that people are appreciating the risks to some of these companies. It's a very complicated structure. It's a complicated structure, and you know these companies rely, their stock prices rely on how much distributions they pay. Right. Essentially, my argument against Kinder Morgan Energy Partners is that d that distribution is not safe in the future. And it's not safe because the company's fundamentals are problematic. They have to, they don't put enough money in, the, in maintenance. I, I read your report. I don't, right. I, I mean, that's the big issue right. is that they are calling um, expansion, they're calling maintenance capex uh, expansion okay. capex. So and they're I, financing maintenance. Right. We should point out that on your report, the stock, the stock tanked a little bit. It's come back when yeah. Rich Kinder bought some shares. Sure. And Charlie, look, I'm not saying that Kinder Morgan is going down tomorrow. I'm not saying it's right. going down next week. Right. I am calling out risks that I see that I don't think are properly reflected okay. in the stock today. But unless I'm wrong, and I read this report, uh, you know, you called it a house of cards, right? Um, you know, those are pretty powerful words. Are you saying this is a, uh, some sort of an illegal, they're, they're improperly accounting for stuff? Because that's what it suggests in I, your I'm report. not saying that anything's illegal here. I think there are some very misleading, um, misleading statements with some of the non-GAAP financials. And right. when I say house of cards, to me, house of cards means something that has an unstable foundation. Right. And when you need to raise more and more and more capital to continue to right. pay out higher and higher distributions, in my view, that's a very unstable foundation. And the capital is often also in debt. It's in debt. It's in more equity raises. Right. And you can see Kinder Morgan and many MLPs do this every single year, every single quarter. Okay. Well, when I was 26 years old, I remember writing a story. I think it was freelance. I was, I was working for the Peekskill Herald or Community Current. I can't remember where it was. But I remember writing a story that, you know, the Peekskill town board hated and everybody was holding it up. Look, this kid Gasparino is such a jerk, got everything wrong. I, it, it, it got to me. Yeah. I mean, how are you handling the pressure here? Because this is, I mean, no, I, you've been, you've been, I've read the blogs. Yeah. It was very controversial. Your boss, Keith McCullough, had to come out, yeah. defend you. That often does not happen on a research report. Uh, you've taken on some very powerful people. Like I said, Rich Kindler is a billionaire. Yep. And he's a very popular guy on Wall Street. And even in some quarters of the media, you know, how are you handling all this? Yeah, I mean, I'm fine with it because I knew that when I was doing my research, and when I was going to, when I made the decision to say what I really think, right. that I knew that it was going to be controversial because nobody else calls out these risks. Why? Why don't they? I mean, are these guys, it's just a, a, a function of Rich Kindler handing a lot, lot of investment banking business out to the big uh, Wall Street firms, and then obviously you guys are a much more independent outfit. Yeah, Charlie, I mean, it's no secret that uh, MLPs do a lot of banking business. They issue a lot of debt, they issue a lot of equity, they do a lot of acquisitions. Right. Um, you know, I just don't think that the analysts in this sector really scrutinize these companies and as they should. So you're saying the conflicts of interest that Elliot Spitzer, who lost as New York City controller, was the New York AG, <laughs> bragged that he stamped out 10 years ago, they still exist today, and this is an example of that? I mean, yeah, I don't think that should be a shock to anybody that knows this sector really, really well. Uh, yes, I mean... Really? The analysts are in bed with, the, um, with this company? I'm not going to go out and say that directly, but I think that my advantage that I have at an independent research firm that has absolutely no vested interest in any right. banking fees, anything like that, right. I think that I am at an advantage to really scrutinize and say what I think of, about this company that some other right. analysts may not well, be. Let me ask you, your modus operandi was kind of interesting. Yeah. It was a tweet. Yeah. That laid out of some of the, it was, a, and it was an email to, to clients, right. and then it was a report. Yeah. You know, some people would say, you know, that, that gave your clients a leg up to buy the puts, which there was a spike in put buy purchasing yep. right after your tweet and, and after your, your email. Right. Is that kosher to do something like that? Well, 
I published first on Kinder Morgan on August 2nd. Uh -huh. I've been tweeting about this company for two months, right. and it's been quite obvious that I've been negative. Right. And you know, the way we, the way we operate is that we can work with clients um, whenever we want. Um, but we don't tell them what's going to be in any right. report and we should or, or when it's going to be published. What's good for Carl Icahn is, should be good for, for Kevin Kaiser, right? Sure. Okay. And uh, we, I just want to put up before we end this, we have a statement from them. I mean, it's kind of interesting. You'll see it. They, they, really, they really don't. Uh, they, we asked them to come on. They, you know, we wanted to have them to refute to. They basically said, we do not believe Kinder Morgan needs defending. And we have been and can continue to be one of the most transparent companies in America. Are they transparent? I don't think they're transparent at all. And a great example of this is in their E and P business. They have four hundred and fifty million dollars, four hundred million dollars of capital expenditures that they're calling expansion capex, and it should be maintenance. Okay, let me ask you this: the last company you wrote a report on, same sort of thing happened. Stock goes down, then it went up, and then it, then it took a while, then it's been down. This is Lynn Energy, right? Yeah. Lynn Energy, you took issue with their accounting practices. They were the, they're now they're now being investigated, I believe, by the Securities and Exchange Commission, correct? Yeah, so there's an informal investigation. Right, informal investigation, well, which really doesn't mean anything other than th 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 that it's informal. <laughs> but it, they haven't they haven't subpoenaed them yet, but it's still uh, it's still a serious matter. Do you think that there should be an investigation of Kinder Morgan and and just what they're doing. I mean, is it, does this cry out for regulars to see if they're booking these expenses right, if they're making these payments right? I would say that Kinder Morgan's issues, um, while uh, are very concerning, that their issues are brought across the MLP sector, right. but theirs are more egregious than some of the others. I think that the entire MLP sector um, is sort of a regulatory nightmare, to be honest with Interesting. you. Okay. And that the you know maintenance capex and what these companies are actually calling maintenance, um, there needs to be some regulation around that. We should point out though the stock is up now. Sure, people obviously don't believe you. Yeah, listen, again, I don't know where the stock is going. I'm calling out risks. I think at some point this distribution gets cut, and that it's not safe. Not safe for investors. I yes. Okay. And, and I know it's a controversial call, but if it wasn't controversial, I wouldn't think it was right. Okay. That's great. Thanks for coming. Thanks nice for having me. Thank you. Bye.